these days photography is such an easy job whenever we see something beautiful around us or maybe we meet friends we just whip out a camera and take pictures most of our cameras these days are embedded in a cellular phone so we don't even need a even a proper camera we just take out a camera and go click 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 have you ever tried to imagine that how exciting it would have been for people to have been photographed for the first time about say 160 years ago when the first picture was taken people were just amazed because it was a painting or an art form that they were used to people used to go to studios to get their pictures painted the sketch may would take days or months to complete and then suddenly came this technology where you had to sit frozen for maybe a few seconds or a minute and your picture was created so i feel that photography is as exciting an invention as maybe lots of things which happened in the 19th century though photography was not an a one day invention there were procedures which take it took years years hundreds of years to make photography the way we know possible historically we know that the camera is a device that was even known to the greeks in the time of aristotle one could not take a picture but one could at least form a picture in a dark room the pinhole camera which most of us know of later came to be known as the camera obscura or the dark chamber was a kind of a chamber in which if you allowed a ray of light to enter through a small hole an inverted picture of the outside was formed on a dark wall we have a record of about uh, sometimes in the 10th century when the arab astronomer al hasan used a dark chamber a camera a camera obscura to look at the solar eclipse so this was a technique which was very well known and it was used by astronomers etc to see this technique was further refined in the renaissance period in italy as we know the renaissance period was a period when lots of scientific inventions discoveries took place leonardo da vinci michelangelo etc in in italy saw this flowering of a period when lots of good literature was written scientific inventions were taken in those periods somebody some person put a lens at the place where the pinhole used to be this was a great breakthrough because the now the lens could capture more rays of light and create a stronger picture that feeble picture inside the dark chamber became a sharper and a brighter picture so the you can just sense how the camera is developing this device which was further kind of miniaturized they made the big chamber smaller was used by painters etc to trace scenes this further in some ways democratized painting people could not so good artists could also make good pictures by facing a this kind of a camera and tracing the picture till now as i say there was no nowhere was the film to be found though it struck people that how about stabilizing this picture how about fixing this picture how exciting would it be so but there was no there wasn't any knowledge of stopping a picture being formed once you close the lens you block the light the picture went away then again somewhere in 17th century it came to be known to chemists etc that silver compounds when exposed to light left an impression blackened area if a silver if a polished surface with silver compound had was exposed to light areas which received light made a black impression this was the germinating idea for a photograph to happen this was further developed but the now if you placed a silver compound one could get a picture but the problem was the picture the silver compound which left an impression when it came exposed to light again the whole picture blackened in 19th century a couple of french inventors made the breakthrough here louis daguerre 
is the person to whom photography the way that we came to know later is attributed to. In 1839, he could stabilize or fix the picture on a plate. Daguerre had used, had polished a silver surface with iodine. So, it became a sil compound called silver iodide. When he exposed this plate, the picture, a latent image of the picture was formed. A latent image is a picture where you cannot see the picture, but the picture has left its impression on a plate. Right now, you cannot expose it to light, you cannot even see it. It has to be washed by certain other chemicals for the picture to really arrive. Here, he made a remarkable discovery of another chemical called sodium thiosulfate, which stabilized the image. What it actually did? It washed away all those unexposed silver compounds, which had not received light from the silver plate. Therefore, when the picture, the plate was brought out in the open, the picture did not have any sensitive silver compounds. All the sensitive silver compounds had either been exposed and the picture formed and the unexposed parts, which were dark or something, were washed away by thi thio sodium thiosulfate. This sodium thiosulfate was the basic compound, the discovery of which helped us create a fixed picture, a picture that was stable. Therefore, it acquired the name fixer. The sodium thiosulfate is more commonly known in the, in the photography industry as fixer. Today also when we do photography, the final thing that we do is after developing the chemicals, after developing the picture, the picture is out, the latent image has become a stable image, the stable image yet needs to be finally fixed by th sodium thiosulfate. So, the discovery of sodium thiosulfate and its use in 1839 by Louis Daguerre in France opened the floodgates to photography. Though I find it important to take name of another person, Joseph Niepce, who good 10 or 13 years before in 1826 had created what we know as the first picture. We know of it. This is a first picture that he took. The only thing is that he did not use the technology of silver compound as we know just now. He used something else. He used bitumen to create a picture and he washed off with washed it with lavender oil and he got a photograph. That was, I mean he was a part of the struggle. He is considered a pioneer of photography. Louis Daguerre himself was assisting Niepce and Niepce could create, but he, he kind of invented a dead end technology. The real technology that we know of photography, what happened? happened in 1839, when Niepce, who was dead by now, his student uh, Louis Daguerre created the silver process of making photographs. After 1839, we had a whole new long era of silver compound based photography. Photography in its first phase was all plate based. It was done either on plates, uh, on as I told you uh, on silver plates polished with iodide compounds or later the emulsion. It had to be the emulsion meaning the, the compound, the silver compounds were dipped in a glass plate and we found photography in its early phases being used as a plate photography as something which was instant. It had to be done on location. The chemical had to be sensitized, the picture taken the picture had to also de be developed at that time. It was also called a wet plate process because everything wet at the location, everything had to the, the, the plate had to be created, the plate had to be exposed and the plate had to be developed. It was not an easy process. I am just trying to say all this because the way that we click a picture just now and we are happy that we have taken a picture, there was nothing. It took a long, long time and it was a cumbersome process to make a photograph. The first revolution in photography and yet I mean the camera itself was a big object. It was a huge box which was only which could only be placed onto a tripod or a stand. The scene had to arrive or the subject had to arrive in front of the camera rather than the camera going places as it goes just now. Portraits were taken in the studio. Try to imagine this was also a time before electricity. 
before so we had to be expo uh, we had to be totally dependent on exposure from the sunlight so photography had a very challenging first phase it was a very difficult job and yet people traveled lands just give it a thought what kind of a uh, adventure photography was in its first thought when it brought distant scenes to people people sitting in cities could watch landscapes and sceneries of far away places of far away monuments war scenes were recorded and brought to people people started hanging pictures of their kings and queens in their houses living in the same city they would have never known them but photography brought them brought prominent personalities politicians and monarchs into the room photography became available we also started photographing each other photography became as it say more and more democratized this is the first phase of photography which and becomes very interesting we are familiar with the name of mr george eastman who formed a first company of photography called kodak somewhere in the 1880s and why why did he become so famous he was a very shrewd businessman and he knew what photography would do in the future he made the first plastic gelatin roll film earlier it was all plate photography people had to take one exposure keep it aside put another plate now he developed a roll film a roll film had many exposures and he put that roll film in, into a small box so he made the camera smaller and he provided a plastic roll film with more than one or say 30 40 exposures so now the camera could travel out 1880s onwards the camera could travel out so he he said his his famous phrase is you push the button we do the rest so people used to go on trips on far off places amateurs started doing photography earlier it it was a it was basically a domain of the professionals who were well trained scientists who could handle the equipment now the camera could be carried by people like you and me on their travels on their family functions on various kind of uh, tours and they came back with loaded with images in a box which they gave to the kodak company the kodak company in its lab took out the uh, this thing the, the roll film loaded a new one and processed it and sent you pictures just imagine picture photography more and more and more photographs started taking place and the camera became a very useful gadget for the common man till now the photography before this was only restricted to the professional the person who had a studio now people were doing photographs day in and day out now let us turn our attention to the camera what is a camera camera is a dark chamber which forms an image today's camera is also a camera a dark chamber which forms an image and records an image we are interestingly living in the times where the second big revolution of photography is happened the first i think happened when the film was discovered more than 150 years ago now the recording medium itself is changing we are becoming more and more used to a digital camera rather than a film camera film cameras reigned and were there for 160 170 years of photography now we can see a rapid change of the recording medium the camera but is the same the image making device is the same because it is based on certain very basic principles of optics light enters through a lens onto an image plane a focal plane as we know where the image is focused by moving the lens forward and backward and the when the sharp image is formed we click a picture we click a picture means we expose the film or now we expose the digital sensor we allow this exposure to happen because we have to control the light light cannot keep falling on the film or the sensor the light the, the film or the sensor is a very sensitive medium we should know the amount of light that it requires so in a dark chamber when we click a picture by moving the trigger button we open the shutter and close it the shutter is an important device in a camera a shutter 
is like a garage shutter. It opens and it closes, allowing the light to fall for a fraction of time, exposing the film or whatever recording medium that we are using. These days, the film or the sensor is so sensitive to light that we exp in normal light, in sunlight, we expose it for as short a time as maybe one thirtieth of a second, one sixtieth of a second, one hundredth of a second. Historically early, we had to ex do this exposure maybe for one minute, to, for three to four minutes. It is said the first picture took hours to expose, but now in modern times, the films etcetera are so sharp, so sensitive to light that the camera, the shutter opens fractionally and it closes. It is a precise equipment. Similarly, there is another equipment which controls the, fo the coming in of light. That is the iris or we call it the aperture. Iris is like the pupil of the eye. It opens an opening that we open or close. It is like a tap. When we open the tap full, lots of water flows. If we open the tap a little bit, very small streak of water flows. So, we have to allow a certain amount of light to enter the iris which is generally located inside the lens. I can show it to you in a lens. It is somewhere inside the lens em embedded between the lens elements and the iris when we click opens and closes. Here you maybe you can see how the iris is opening when the when we do the exposure the amount of light is controlled by the aperture. The aperture is controlled by the iris whereas, the shutter is, con is a, a separate device which in this camera as you can see now again opens and closes. The shutter is a device which allows the entry of light into the camera on the film. The shutter can, I have removed the lens, I can sh now you can see I can maybe most probably you can see my face through the shutter. The shutter is opening and closing. It is allowing the light to fall on the film. This is a film camera. If I, the film was kept here, the film would re receive an exposure of light by opening and closing the shutter. So, the shutter and the aperture are two devices. The aperture here is in the lens, the iris is in the lens and in the camera body is the shutter which is allowing the passage of light. So, just to as a revision, a camera is a dark chamber which with the help of a lens receives light. The lens happens to focus light to gather optimum amount of light from outside. By focusing the camera, we can focus a sharp image onto the film plane. Right ahead of the film plane somewhere is a shutter which opens for an, a restricted moment of time and closes giving it an exposure. The other control to the light is provided by the aperture. The aperture is embedded in the lens and the opening of the aperture like the pupil of our eye allows a definite amount of light to travel in. So, these three things the lens which focuses the light on the film plane, the aperture or the iris which controls the amount of light coming in and out and the shutter which is a kind of a door which opens and closes again controlling the amount of light enable us to capture a sharp image onto the film or the onto the better to say a recording plane. Cameras have evolved over a period of time. As I mentioned earlier, the first of the cameras were big cameras. Gradually they miniaturized. They gradually when the film became more stronger as I had mentioned earlier the film was maybe a big sheet film. Gradually when the roll film was discovered, it became smaller. One could take many an exposures and fit in the film inside a camera. The camera also became smaller. The camera became handled. The camera could travel here and there. The camera itself evolved from a big camera to a small camera. But the beautiful part about photography is that the optics, the principle of photography remained the same. We use the camera again in the same, same way that we used it first time 160 years ago. Yes, it is now a more precision body. It, use, it has a sharper lenses, it has more devices and gadgets to give us just the right exposure. But as you can see here, I have kept three different or rather four different lenses here. This is a digital camera. Here the recording medium is different. The film is being formed, is being captured on a digital sensor, but 
the lens is there, the aperture is there, the shutter is there, only the recording medium is different. These are three film cameras, these two are rather older cameras, these cameras were much in use say 40 to 50 years ago, whereas this is a current camera, a current film camera. This is a film SLR, this is a digital SLR. SLRs are the most uh, commonly used professional level cameras. Uh, which are easy to use and are used by the professional world. What is an SLR? SLR stands for single lens reflex. Single lens reflex means a camera which is a single lens camera. You can see here there is a single lens. Even in the digital camera there is a single lens. Image is what we see is what we photograph. The image that I view from here, this is place is called the viewfinder. I view the image from here, but to view the image, I see the real image which will take the picture. This is possible because of a device inside a camera called a reflex mirror. A reflex mirror is a mirror which moves when I give exposure. It moves up and down. In a SLR camera, when I take a actually when I take a picture, the the view gets blackened because the reflex mirror moves up and allows light to pass straight through through the shutter onto the film plane. Whereas in other cameras, in earlier cameras like this one, a TLR, this is a twin lens reflex camera where one saw the picture through the top lens, but one photo photographed the picture from the lower lens. This was used to view the picture. There is a ground glass the viewing mechanism is here, I see a picture being formed here, but the picture that I click forms has an aperture and a shutter behind this lens. Big disadvantage here is I am actually not seeing what I am photographing, but I am seeing something slightly different, something more, a little above it. It makes when I take a close up, it makes viewing a bit difficult because I am seeing 90 percent of the frame of the actual frame that is being photographed because the viewing camera, the, the viewing lens is different from the taking lens or the film capturing lens. But the principle of photography is the same as I mentioned. All these cameras have a lens which is focusing the picture, they all have an aperture which is allowing the right amount of light to go in, they all have a shutter which opens and closes again controlling the amount of light falling onto the film or the sensor. So, photography in principle follows a same pattern everywhere, but there are various types of cameras. This is a twin lens reflex camera, a TLR which was very much in use in the 50s and 60s and 70s, then later came the SLR. The SLR was, the, was a photojournalist camera, it was a, a fast using camera because here you see a correct image also, you see what you photograph, here you did not see what you photograph. Early, there were also cameras like this range finder camera where the focus again you saw through here and you took a picture through here. So, there was a slight difference in the picture you saw, but ultimately the, the picture that you got was almost the same what from what you saw. So, cameras have evolved over a period of time and there are cameras specialized cameras for specialized jobs. The, that does not mean that there are only these kinds of cameras, there are other cameras also, there are bigger cameras also. Still the commercial industry, the advertising industry uses big cameras called view cameras. They are cameras placed on bellows on a rail. They have a film surface, a, a, a film plane and a picture plane or an image. You use those cameras, those cameras are important because they use a, the same kind of an old, not a plate film, but they use a sheet film, like something like an x-ray sheet the picture itself, the negative or the picture comes is recorded on a very big surface. The principle being the bigger the picture surface, the film surface, the crisper, the better the resolution. You have to blow it up lesser. A small film has to be blown up many, many times and once you expand the film many, many times, you start seeing grains and you start seeing spots. The resolution, the sharpness of the film decreases. A camera which uses a bigger film even these cameras use a bigger film than a regular film that we know of which is used in as LS, uh, the single lens reflex camera. Even the films are of various types. Cameras were or are still classified basically on three types, 
on the three types of films. They are called large format cameras, medium format cameras and 35 mm film cameras. 35 mm film is the smallest that is the film that we know of. Bigger than this is another roll film which is a 120 film. The film size is much bigger it is 6 centimeters wide. It is loaded in these cameras and yet people use such films for professional work. The size being that is called a medium format size and then you have the sheet film variety where the smaller sheet film is a bigger than a postcard 4 inches by 5 inches. The film itself is big, but it is used for specialized purposes where you need immense details. Most of the advertising photography, most of the banners which have to be blown up means expanded or enlarged many a times are shot on that kind of a camera. So, cameras have a classification in, in terms of their the films that are using a medium format camera, a large format camera or the smallest a photojournalist generally or an amateur uses a 35 mm camera. Now, with the com coming of the digital technology where the film is getting phased out, the sensor itself is complying to that size. The digital sensor itself there can be a, a small format digital sensor, there can be a medium, medium format digital sensor or a large format digital sensor. Cameras are into a new phase because of digital, they will evolve much more, they will become more user friendly and more instant. The digital cameras are very easy to use in some ways because you can instantly take a picture, download them and send them on computers to long distance. But yet compared to film quality, some connoisseurs, some experts still believe that film creates much better quality just now, but that is just a matter of time. Soon digital will surpass film altogether and the film will become a part of history. So, we have to look forward into the digital era. So, here we saw various types of cameras. I explained to you what the basic function or how a basic camera functions, which is the same as be it an old camera or a new camera. Digital era is coming and camera the recording medium has changed, but the camera shall still remain the same. There are other parts to a camera which we have to look into much detail, how they affect the image, say the lens. The lens is a very important part of the camera. Similarly, the film, the film or the digital sensor, they all have their important role to play in refining the photograph, in imparting proper characteristics to a photograph, the look, the perspective, all these are issues which make a photograph or a photographer's task much easier or much challenging. We will look at these in future episodes of the same program. Mm -hmm.